Hello, and this video is exclusively for people who like making money. We are talking about six email marketing A to B tests that you should be running every single week. No, this isn't just set up your tests once a month and be like, yeah, we're good. A little subject line difference where you change like two words. No, these should be ran and monitored every single week if you want to maximize your revenue. So we're going to get straight to it, talking about six specific tests that you should be running. So this one here is graphic email versus a text-based email. And this is the difference. We have a graphic-based email up top. You can see the click rates, open rates, um, and then the placed order. You can see open rates were better for the text-based email on the bottom. Click rate was almost 50% better as well. And then the placed order rate as well. You can see the placed order value right here much more. And so this is just the difference that a text-based email can have. So the text-based emails are the ones that are literally just pure text rather than doing graphics. Everybody is sending graphics. Not everybody is sending text-based emails. This is why it stands out so much. And you can have results like this, where this was a best sellers email where you think a lot of people are going to think for best sellers, you need to have like all the graphics and you need to show all the products. No, not necessarily. Not in this case. This was the text-based email for this brand and it worked really well. So make sure that you're test testing your text-based emails to see where they are the most effective and where you can fit them into your strategy because you do want to make sure that you have both graphic and text-based emails. So this is the first test that you should be running and testing if you haven't already. This brings us to our next one, which you probably know, but probably don't know the impact of, and that is the subject line. So the subject line A-B test is exactly how it sounds. You're testing the subject lines. But what I want you to pay attention to is the difference in subject lines, which I'm gatekeeping, but the subject line here, this is an abandoned cart email. The subject line here resulted, like a lot of people think, the subject line is how you get more opens, or the open rate is what the subject line is testing. And look at this. The open rate is pretty much the same. In fact, this had more opens just probably because of variability. However, if you look at the placed order rate, 11.6% versus 3.8%. And that's also the value. Now, all we changed was the subject line. Little things like the subject line can make a huge difference in the placed order value. Don't just look at your subject line as open rates. It's You're just testing the open rate. Subject line can have an impact on somebody's actual how they might purchase the product if you make it a little bit more exclusive in the subject line if you make it like where there's less barrier to entry like if you say for an abandoned cart email which i'm pretty sure this one was in terms of like the subject line if you say something like your order is ready to go versus like your order is waiting for you your order is waiting for you isn't going to be as effective as your order is like ready to ship it's packed and ready just click this button so it's very low barrier to entry and you can get higher place order rates like this so make sure you're tracking your subject line tests make sure you're doing them all the time and frequently and you're testing different styles of them and you're looking primarily at the placed order rate that's what we, that's what we care about open rates are cool but i'd rather have larger placed or placed order rates so this one had a higher uh open rate but way lower placed order rate so make sure you pay attention to that Next, we have products versus categories. Now, this is going to be brand specific, and this is something that we test very early on with our clients in how we want to like adjust, have our emails going forward, where we are promoting specific products or promoting different categories of products. Now, this isn't going to apply to you if like you're a one product store, but if you have tons of products, you have tons of SKUs, you want to test like categories like linking people to like men's products versus women's products, or do you want to show like four men's products for women's products like individually rather than categories and so in this specific instance this was a brand that um they have a ton of different SKUs, and we did categories versus individual products now i thought that categories would be better because there are a lot of SKUs, but categories is up top here and you can see 118 dollars on one recipient who purchased and then one percent clicks 1.04 and then linking to individual products here at a 1.14% click rate and way more purchases, much higher average order value, which I'm not really gonna attribute to the email, but these were specific products. Now, we thought the opposite, but this is a very high SKU store. There are tons of different categories that people can choose from. And kind of when you give people a ton of options, they're less, like, less likely to click any of them. When somebody's shopping by category, they have to continue to search for more products rather than like showing them the products directly on the email. In this case, that worked better for this brand. We see it go both ways, but you'd be surprised how big of a difference this can have depending on the brand. Like for, for another brand, it might be categories would be way better and these results could be flipped. 
make sure that you're testing them so you can get kind of a sense of your customers like buying preferences and especially when they're browsing and opening their emails. So products versus categories right there. Next, we are doing long form versus short form. This is one of the bigger tests that you can run. I didn't mean to copy this link, but you can see the impact right here. A longer form email versus a shorter form email. This was like a note from the founder telling people like why our product is so amazing. And so you can see here um, on the click rate and then the placed order rate. So this was in the welcome flow, welcome flow email too. And you can see the longer form email giving these people more information on the product, which you might find useful and which we thought would perform better, only resulted in a 0.2% placed order rate, 2.4% click rate, $210. Meanwhile, the shorter version, which was like six lines of text, had a 3.4% click rate compared to 2.4, and 0.7% placed order rate, and obviously a lot more revenue. Um, and you can see, like, delivered, these were, this is off a 2,000 person sample size. So it's likely that this wasn't by accident. There were 2,000 people on each side, so technically like a 4,000 person sample size. So it probably wasn't by accident. For this brand, people liked shorter messaging. And so, Literally what this email was, was something as simple as, hey, welcome into the brand. I wanted to give you a warm welcome. If you didn't see, our products are cool because this one fact, shop now. That's all it was. And then this one was going into like the science behind it and much more background info. And I think it just distracted people and it wasn't simple and people just don't read their emails too often. They don't want to sit down and read every single word that you're sending. So this made the call to action very buried in the email rather than making it six lines of text email or the call to action is one of those lines of text one in six is better than like having 15 lines of text where it can be buried in one of those lines so long form for short form make sure you're texting testing them it's gonna be different for each audience next we have campaign timing which is another very high lever that you want to dial for your brand so this one was so some brands they'll be better at certain times of the day this was a test of morning versus like late afternoon and you can see late afternoon the open rates 26% versus morning 36%. You can see the click rate was actually higher, um, but the placed order rate, there were just too little people. And so placed order much higher for people earlier in the day rather than at night. Sometimes you think maybe at night you can send people emails or the late afternoon because they're gonna be off work, but that doesn't always work when you can get people on the lunch break and maybe they it performs better. It's going to depend on the brand. So you wanna make sure that you're testing. This was, I believe, 11 a.m. versus 4 p.m. Um, and you can see just the massive, massive, massive difference. And so now we know going forward, if we're say making $2,000 more on every campaign that we send, it's gonna be tens of thousands of dollars more over the course of a couple months. And so campaign timing, super, super important. Make sure that you dial what times are important for your brand. And then we have the flow time delay. So similar to the campaign timing, we wanna test our time delays in the flows. This is a very high lever that you can pull. You can see waiting 30 minutes and waiting four hours. And this was for a site abandoned flow. So after somebody goes to your website and then leaves, they don't view any products, they don't add to cart, this is the email that we're sending them. And we tried waiting 30 minutes, try to get them while their attention is hot. You'd think that maybe that would perform better. They just left the site, we're at the top of their mind and we send them an email. That's what we thought, but it actually had a way less placed order rate on a massive sample size. And so 0.7% placed order rate versus waiting four hours. Now this could be, be this had lower engagement, less opens, less clicks, because po probably people weren't ready right off the bat, but maybe, maybe they were more likely to purchase later on because maybe at this time when they abandoned site, they were like busy walking around with the kids and you send a reminder 30 minutes later, they could still be doing that. Whereas four hours later, when they're sitting in their bed at night, they might be more likely to purchase. That's what we saw here, uh, having a higher placed order rate in much higher revenue. Very high lever that you can do, especially for your abandonment emails. Make sure that you're testing. It's gonna be different for each one. Um, make sure that you're testing your time delay between your messages as well. Very, very high lever that you can pull. And then one of the last ones here, last one here, we have branded text base versus plain text base. Now we've talked a little bit about text based campaigns. Now. How do you like execute on a text-based campaign and how do we want to run it? So two types of text-based emails you can send. You can send a branded text-based email or a just plain, plain text-based email. So a branded text-based email is going to have like your logo at the top and it's just going to be like plain text. There are no images or anything, but it has your logo at the top, plain text, and then maybe like your footer at the bottom. That's a branded plain text. And then we have just plain, plain text, which is literally nothing but text, no logos, no anything, and it's sent 
in the native inbox providers like format. So if you were to open like a Gmail from one of your buddies, it would show up exactly as that with the white background, black text, and just just that. So that's stuff that you want to test too, because at times they're going to perform differently. The pro of having a branded text-based email is you have your logo at the top, which people can click, um, which is going to lead to more people going to your site. And then it's also going to be, um, it's going to be like more branded and attached to your brand feel. Whereas the plain, plain text email is just super simple, super easy to click. There isn't any other call to actions. Um, it's usually, it's like a little bit shorter and easier to digest, but there are pros and cons of each. So like this test, for example, we tested it for this brand and you can see branded text-based is on this side. And then we have the plain, plain text-based on this side. And so you can see delivered here, 1900 delivered, 1400 delivered here. So less delivered but about the same revenue. This has a higher placed order rate, 1.7% versus 1.2%, which is nearly a 50% increase in placed order rate. And then click rate as well, 4% versus 3%. Um, so the plain, plain text just happened to work better. It looks a little bit more personal. Um, so it's gonna depend um, on what you, on kind of the brand and what your messaging is. A lot of times if it's going to be direct from the founder, like you're saying, hey, it's Max, the founder of this brand, plain text would be the way to go. But if you're going coming from the brand itself, like the well copy, like this is the team at well copy, then maybe the branded is a little bit better because you're gonna have your logo and you can make those associations. But uh, branded text based and plain text based are things you, you are going to wanna test and make sure you're mixing them up every now and again, but lean towards the one that performs better. So those were the tests that you should be running, branded text based versus plain text based, flow time delays, campaign timing, long form versus short form content, products versus categories in your emails, your subject lines, and then graphic emails versus text-based emails. So make sure that you use these. Let me know if you have questions with setting these up. These were the six email marketing A to B tests you should be running every week if you like making money. Hopefully that was helpful and let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one.